By now, most people will be familiar with the concept of ray tracing. It's a technique that can provide accurate reflections, refractions, and shadows. While the idea of ray tracing images goes all the way back to the 16th century, it wasn't until the late 1970s that the first ray tracing animations started appearing on television. Though a lot of 3D animations still used more simple shading, or even just wireframe vectors. Early examples of the use of 3D computer-generated graphics include Disney's Tron and Star Trek The Wrath of Khan, both from 1982. These early animations had a distinct look and atmosphere because of their technical limitations. I was quite fascinated by them at the time. Early on, very expensive supercomputers were used to generate these animations, like the iconic Cray computers. Later on, the somewhat more affordable silicon graphics computers were used. Then, in 1985, Commodore released the Amiga 1000, a home computer with the ability to display animations with 4096 colors. Eric Graham was one of the early adopters and he decided to program a ray tracer for it. With this ray tracer, he created the first 3D animation generated on an Amiga, called Juggler. Even Commodore themselves initially didn't believe it was rendered on an Amiga. The animation seems to have been inspired by a 1982 Juggler animation by Information International. The Juggler demo would later on be developed into the Amiga 3D rendering application Sculpt3D, and after that Sculpt4D which we used a lot at the School of the Arts where I was studying to become a 3D animator. A couple of years ago, I purchased a holographic light field display, the portrait, created by Looking Glass Factory. It can show up to 100 viewing directions at once, within a 50 degree viewing angle. It achieves this by using a slanted lenticular layer. I rendered some holograms for it with Blender, made an interactive boing ball demo for it, and a holographic version of the Vectrex built-in game Mindstorm. Then I came up with the idea to make a holographic recreation of the Amiga Juggler animation. At first I used Blender for this, but ray tracing in Blender is too realistic compared to the Juggler animation. I had to create my own node shaders and compositing layers to reproduce the unrealistic aspects of the original animation. I made the decision to create a replica of the original animation, as close as possible to the original. Remakes, up to now, haven't been very accurate. This would turn out to be a massive amount of work. Trying to match everything in Blender was a major hassle. At one point, I realized I could instead recreate the original animation in real time, as a ray tracing shader without using RTX. So here's the result. The camera and light source can be moved with mouse and keyboard, a controller or a space navigator. Multiple options are available, like changing the material of the globes and the floor and the animation speed. Matching the camera and light positions, field of view and all the odd quirks of the original animation ended up taking the most time. The shadows helped aid me in matching the correct poses of the arms and legs. I initially calculated them with angles and inverse kinematics, but then realized the original animation just stretches and squashes the limbs. The original animation turns out to not be symmetrical at all, and it makes sense. The checker pattern of the floor has a classic mistake, as well as some odd rounding errors. No polygons are used. All geometry is calculated by the shader, while the animation is being calculated by separate code. One drawback of these light field displays is that the amount of depth is limited. With elements further away, the different viewing angles start to separate, blurring the image. To combat this, I created an autofocus effect that keeps 3D objects sharp near the display. It does this in an intelligent, adaptive way, responding to camera and animation speed. While the perspective effect shows 3D objects getting closer, they physically stay at the same distance to the screen. 
Strangely enough, your brain just accepts this. I even exaggerate the 3D effect when the juggler is far away and it still doesn't look odd. To render it directly to the holographic display, I butchered the original Unity SDK, turning it into a ray tracer. I removed all the multiple camera angle logic and the intermediate step of creating a so-called killed image. This resulted in a large performance and image sharpness boost. The shader calculates the right ray direction for each subpixel. This is what the image going to the holographic display actually looks like. The original animation took an hour per frame to render, at 64,000 rays per frame. My shader renders at 9.5 million rays per frame. On an RTX 4090, it renders around 3.6 million times as fast as the original. If I receive my replacement work laptop in time, I will have this demo running live at Outline. Drop by to see it. It looks much better on the holographic display.